Now I've almost finished the game. I just have to complete the Pokedex entries to the complete level so I can see what else this game has to hold. But that being true, I can now retool my telling of the history of Hisui. In the beginning of time and space, before actually there were time and space, Arceus created the Pokemon world by releasing Dialga and Palkia. Dialga sending forth the flow of time, Palkia causing space to expand. Arceus also created Uxi, Azov, and Mesper and gave them power to bind Dialga and Palkia should it be necessary. Two, Dialga and Palkia created matter and three, Uxi, Azov, and Mesper created spirit. When the creative light of Arceus shone forth, it caused a deep shadow to appear. That shadow was Giratina. After the creative act was finished, Arceus poured his creative energy into Orginor and buried it in Mount Coronet, thereby giving Mount Coronet special energy and sacred properties that affects Pokemon in very interesting ways. Also, the plates containing Arceus' power were scattered around his suite, which is the region of creation. In time, many civilizations sprang up over the Pokemon world. The most special, and probably first, civilization was Celestica. The people closest to the birthplace of the world and likely the people Arceus chose to reveal himself to the world through as Almighty Sinnoh. Sinnoh being a Japanese word meaning mysterious, something like that. The Celesticans could call Arceus by assembling the plates and playing the Azure Flute. There was only one Azure Flute, and it was given only to the chosen one, the one chosen to see Arceus, likely the leader of the Celesticans. The other Celesticans had lesser flutes to call the companion Pokemon that were gifted with power by Arceus. Most Celesticans, however, also had partner Pokemon aside from the ten nobles that were specifically chosen by Arceus. The Celesticans built the temple about halfway up Mount Coronet that was a copy of the Hall of Origin, Arceus' domain on Earth. Just as on the mystery stage in Sinjo, statues of Dialga, Palkia and Giratina were placed in their proper positions around the spot for Ar Arceus, just as also in the Hall of Origin. Perhaps in the time of Celestica, offerings were given to Arceus by placing the offerings in the proper place on the mystery stage, this, well, should, that would be the center where Arceus stands, assembling the plates, and playing the Azure Flute to call Arceus down from the top of Mount Coronet. Arceus may have normally stood on the dais, platform, or throne at the Temple of Sinnoh and given light to all of his suite. The ten Pokemon given power by Arceus were also enshrined there, reenacting the giving of light by having Arceus stand at the dais and shine on the statues. The Temple of Sinnoh was Arceus' throne room on Earth. In addition, a lookout post was built at the foot of Mount Coronet in order to keep a constant watch on the light of Arceus. Arceus, or Almighty Sinnoh as he was called, gave his name to the Celestican people and they became known over time as the Ancient Sinnoh People. The people of Almighty Sinnoh, or Arceus. One day, Giratina decided that he would attack Arceus and his people in rage. He tore open a hole in space-time and rained bolts of rage down on the ten noble Pokemon, causing them to become frenzied. A hero arose to quell the frenzied Pokemon and then proceeded to confront the source of the calamity. Then, Giratina itself emerged from the shadow, shadow world through the space-time rift that tore open. The intrusion of shadow unleashed many malevolent spirits onto Hisui, the land of Hisui, and destruction rained down upon the celestic and civilization, destroying many buildings as seen in the collapsed pillars all around. The hero constructed the red chain with the help of Uxi, Azov, and Mesprit, and proceeded to close the space-time rift that Giratina tore open. Eventually, the hero managed to best Giratina, who then admitted defeat and then returned to the shadow world where Arceus then locked him as a response to his extreme violence. However, Celestica was ruined. 
cities lay decimated and the temple halfway up the mountain had been destroyed. In response, Arceus decided to return to his domain, the Hall of Origin, after testing the hero's strength. Arceus likely chose to do this so that the next attack, if it came, would not be directed against the people of, of Celestica, and they would not be um, taken up in the violence. However, the Celesticans mourned the departure of Arceus and tried many ways to get his light back. The Giratina statue on the Celestican mystery stage was destroyed and removed to the back of the temple, and Giratina's name was erased from history to avoid mentioning him, lest he return. However, the destruction had been wrought. The desolation caused by the calamity and the departure of Arceus caused many Celesticans to migrate to outer corners of his suite. The malevolent spirits were sealed at the Shrouded Memorial with the use of a giant keystone, and stories of the hero's adventure were inscribed in stone all over his suite. Somehow, though, a little Celestican girl would break the seal in mischief and be cursed to wander his suite until the spirits were resealed. Though, however, the Celesticans eventually left his suite and moved to a place called Sinjo, where they rebuilt the temple that they lost to Giratina. Just as the first time, they built it in the mountains, but for safekeeping, they made it only accessible through another site that was built in a place called Johto. Perhaps the Pokemon that inhabit the ruins in Johto served to transport those deemed worthy to the replica of the site of creation. After a while, some Celesticans returned to the now desolate land of Hisui. They knew that one day, another hero would arise to finally fix the Dark Age that Hisui had been thrown into by the Calamity. After some time, a group of people came across the sea after having heard of Almighty Sinnoh from the surviving Celesticans in Sinjo, and probably Johto and in other regions as well. Those who came across the sea arrived to find ruined temples and many monuments. However, since Arceus itself stood in Celestica, there were never any statues of Arceus because, well, they weren't needed. He himself was there. Also, the Calamity of Giratina had all but faded from memory because they didn't write about it and the Celesticans had left and any references to the Lord of Shadow had been erased from history. Given this lack of information, all that was left was mentions of Almighty Sinnoh in verses featuring space and time. The newcomers couldn't really agree on the nature of Almighty Sinnoh. They each knew that there were noble Pokemon left behind, or rather the descendants of the noble Pokemon, and they started revering them just as the old verses said, or maybe, maybe, they had help from one of the few remaining Celesticans that was still in his suite. Anyhow, Disagreement arose over whether Almighty Sinnoh was ruler of time or space, and this culminated with Dialga, time, and Palkia, space. This culminated when, sorry, Dialga, ruler of time, and Palkia, ruler of space, appeared to two noble, notable people within the group of newcomers. Again, with incomplete knowledge, they had no idea that there existed one who was above them both. Also, the noble Pokemon didn't turn over the plates to these newcomers, and the Azure Flute did not appear to either of the leaders of the time and space factions. These factors combined completely blinded the newcomers to the existence of Arceus. Thanks to the appearance of Dialga and Palkia to two leaders within the factions, and they didn't witness Dialga and Palkia and all their power, the group of newcomers factioned off into the Diamond and Pearl clans, Diamond having seen Dialga and Pearl having seen Palkia, and listening to their respective leaders. After that, they went to war with each other, which grieved the Celestican who wrote the old verses. The Dark Age of Hisui continued. Finally, about 200 years before the present, another group arrived in Hisui from all over the world. They came from all over the world to form one group, to seek out a new life in Hisui. They established Juvenile Village on the coastlands and formed an expedition team calling it Galaxy. However, these new settlers were deathly afraid of Pokemon, unlike the now long established Diamond and Pearl clans. They treated them as brothers and sisters, they didn't have Pokeballs, and in fact in the beginning they hated the idea of Pokeballs when the Galaxy team brought them in. However, the Galaxy team helped broker a tenuous peace between the Diamond and Pearl clans and sent out expedition groups to survey the land of Hisui. Seeing Hisui in its weakened state, Giratina decided to take this chance to claim the land of Hisui for himself. He 
gave the spooky plate to the merchant Volo, who was descended from the ancient Celesticans. Knowing that receiving this plate would send Volo on a quest to meet Arceus, and eventually, Volo would play right into Giratina's hands. Or claws. Or wings. Eventually, much to the wonder and horror of the galaxy team in the Diamond and Pearl Clans, the space-time rift opened again. However, as most of the Celesticans were no longer around, no one could read the now ancient sites that had also been left to the elements for thousands of years, so no one knew what to do except the, C the Celestican Lord Keeper. Arceus, seeing that he, he was in no shit to take on Giratino, called the young human from a, a future time in another universe, in which people and Pokemon had been working together for at least hundreds of years, to come to Hisui. This human was taken in by the Galaxy Team and was put to work surveying Hisui. Arceus left this human a cryptic message, seek out all Pokemon. As this human embarked on his quest, he met up with and befriended the Hisuian clans, as well as helped the Jubilife newcomers overcome their fear of Pokemon. Like the ancient hero before him, this human quelled the frenzies of the descendants of the original Ten Noble Pokemon, and befriended many others along the way. Many other Pokemon, that is. Eventually, this human would have to construct the red chain and use it to bind the rulers of space and time, one of which was bound by using the red chain in combination with a sacred stone from the mountain and a Pokeball. After saving Hisui, as much as the ancient hero did before him, the lore keeper guided this lost one in gathering all the place left behind by Arceus, as well as transferring all her celestic knowledge to him. However, the true culprit was about to be unmasked. After gathering all the Arceus plates, the lost human made his way to the Arceus' throne on Earth in ancient days, that is, the Temple of Sinnoh. There, the merchant revealed that he had been consumed by passion to meet Arceus to the point where he aided Giratina in escaping his banishment and reopening the space-time rift once again in hopes of dragging Arceus out from hiding. After the merchant Volo fought with our hero and lost, he turned over the last plate to our, to our hero and the Azure Flute that had been lost for millennia finally reappeared. To our hero, that is. The merchant, finally freed of his own frenzy, then left the land of Hisui. Arceus then reminded our hero that the duty of seeking out all Pokemon still remained. The lore keeper helped our new, early modern hero by helping him befriend the Pokemon that represent the forces of nature. She also finally fulfilled her duty of aiding the lost one, our hero, by passing down the knowledge her ancestors held so dear. Giratina, finally having a change of heart, also decided to join the hero in protecting the land of Hisui from any other threat. After our hero had sought out all Pokemon on the land of Hisui, he had to return to Arceus' throne where, just like in times of old, the hero, your character, who had collected all the plates and now had the Azure Flute, played it and the door to the Hall of Origin was open. Arceus decided to deliver one final test, a battle against himself. The fighting was fierce, but the hero eventually passed Arceus' test. Arceus was pleased, and granted the hero a portion of himself to walk his way along with, well, the hero. The journey was now complete. Our lost human, by holding all the plates, the Azure Flute, and walking with an avatar of Arceus, had become the new heir of Celestica and brought an end to the dark age of his suite. Well, I finished the game now, and I think that's this is all I can get from this theory. Anyhow, the next video, which might take a while to make as I have to complete the Pokedex entries, we'll talk about the future of Hisui after the events of Pokemon Legends Arceus. See you then!